Back rack, the floor is yours. You have six minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Minister, for being here with us today and, and taking our questions. Um, you and I have spoken in the recent past about the situation facing Prince Rupert, a community that's struggling with a, a serious infrastructure deficit. This is a small community, a small city that supports Canada's uh, third fastest growing port and, um, and can't accommodate future port growth unless it uh, addresses its water, drinking water infrastructure crisis. And as you know, over, over Christmas, uh, the city had to declare a state of emergency after a series of water main breaks. They now fear the catastrophic collapse of their drinking water infrastructure, uh, which, of course, would put them in a, a very uh, tenuous situation when it comes to supporting the port operation and, and the residents who call that place home. And we're thrilled to see the BC government uh, come in to the tune of 65 million dollars, uh, which is uh, part of the cost of addressing the immediate needs of the community uh, in their in their water crisis. Now, I asked you a question about this in the House of Commons on, on March 7th, and I was really pleased that you ended your response with, um, quote, that you hope to have good news soon. And I wonder if you could start by talking about uh, what good news might look like from a federal perspective and what soon might mean. So uh, good news would look like uh, uh, a further significant investment from the government of Canada with the city of Prince Rupert in this critical project. So uh, Mr. Backrack, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Backrack is absolutely correct. Uh, he and I have had a number of occasions to discuss the importance of this project. It is an anomaly that a city with that population uh, would be such a critical piece of the economic infrastructure of Canada. And uh, I have heard from business leaders on multiple occasions the importance of that port. I have been going to Prince Rupert since I was a kid with my dad, who was then the fisheries minister in the 70s. Um, so I understand the size of the community and the size of the economic impact for the Canadian economy. It is unreasonable for the city of Prince Rupert to assume uh, some infrastructure as critical as a water system the full cost. You're right. The province of British Columbia invested $65 million, which we think is, is positive. We obviously recognize that. Um, we know that there's a program at our department called the Disaster Mitigation and Adaptation Fund. All bureaucratic programs have nice acronyms. This one is called DMAF. Um, on February 28th and again on April 5th, uh, there have been conversations between the department and the city of Prince Rupert. There's a deadline in July by which those projects, July 19th, and we'll work with the city of Prince Rupert, Mr. Backrack, to make sure that they maximize the possibility for the government of Canada to allocate funds from that program. And I'll work with the deputy and our colleagues in the department uh, to make sure they understand the priority that you and I and the government have in terms of finding a way to help Prince Rupert. That, I hope, may be the first and best place to start, as I said to you, but it won't be the end of our work together. And we're looking at other options where the government of Canada could continue to make those investments. Uh, thank you very much, Minister. It's certainly uh, promising and, and good to hear that there are plans being put in place to get them the assistance they need uh, as quickly as possible. I think the the idea of um, having the catastrophic failure of a, a city's water system in such an important geographic location is really uh, unthinkable and needs to be avoided. Um, longer term, once the immediate infrastructure uh, crisis is averted, longer term, there needs to be a way to support these smaller port communities that are playing such an integral role in our country's economy. One of the proposals that's been put forward is establishing some kind of a threshold under which the federal stipend that port authorities pay to the federal government would be redirected towards municipalities to support the infrastructure that they need to accommodate port growth and run their civic operations. Is this a proposal that your government is considering? Short answer would be yes. Of course, that my colleague, the Minister of Transport, would have the direct line of sight on these port sort of lease payments or so on. But it was an idea that you shared with me uh, when we spoke a few months ago, I didn't hadn't thought of that. I talked to Omar Algabra, my colleague, about exactly that. B 
because it speaks to the creative way that our government should partner with a city like Prince Rupert in recognizing that the traditional Canada, BC, city of Prince Rupert programs don't meet. This is not a precedent for a hundred places in the country. Uh, It's uh, maybe a handful of smaller places that are huge economic uh, arteries for the country. So the answer is yes, we're looking with Transport Canada at how that might work, but we're not going to stop there. The deputy and I and our colleagues in the department, as we reimagine new infrastructure programs, uh, whether it's uh, the Canada Community Building Fund or other instruments that we hope to roll out in the coming months, there's a fall economic statement coming up, there's a budget coming up. I've talked to provincial, your provincial government, Mr. Backrack, has been Uh, very successful or very articulate in advocating for this as well. So I'm hoping that we'll have a better toolkit at Infrastructure Canada to work directly with these smaller municipalities that happen to be by geography, these giant economic arteries for the whole country. Uh, We should have a better toolkit to respond to that. My commitment to you is to develop that with Prince Rupert in mind. But we're looking at these short-term solutions. Disaster Mitigation Adaptation Fund can be another contribution, we hope, and perhaps Transport Canada's port leases, but I'll be happy to follow up again with Mr. Algabra. 